This is Stefan. I'm here in the Facebook cube here at Move the Dial, and I'm here with Vishaka Singh, the co-founder of 4 or 5 Labs. Thank you so much for making time to chat. Thank you so much, Stefan. Yes. So we're here to talk about DNI today, mm -hmm. but you've got a really interesting story. You yeah. were an actor, you were a producer. Um, when you moved to Canada, you're now a tech entrepreneur. Yes. You run this growing small company, 4 or 5 mm -hmm. Labs. So you know, we talked a lot about sustainability and making sure that DNI isn't a once and done. Yeah. But in in your case, it's almost uh, what are you making as a foundation right now to make sure that later on DNI won't be a once and done. And I'm right. curious, you know, what's on your mind in terms of DNI as a young founder with all this very interesting previous experience? You know, a, I'm I'm very happy that these conversations are happening because um, when I actually became a tech entrepreneur, I ventured into the space. I am. Let me just clarify. I'm not from the STEM background. Okay. okay. I've been an actor and I am a film producer. I'm from the creative fields and I came into this field out of my own need because there was a need to connect with my audiences. Amazing. And that's how 4 or 5 Labs was born because it connects influencers and celebrities with their fans across all social media platforms. We are their writing tool that helps them save time. So, but while we're building this tool, uh, we realized that we needed to have women perspective even at the designing stage. You know, um, and uh, I remember my my tech team was constantly in touch with me and my other influencer friends, female influencer friends, and it was because of their feedback and my feedback that our, our product actually came about. And uh, now that we're moving on to our next level of scaling up, there was this old question of I, as a co-founder of a tech startup, as a female, what was I bringing to the table apart from my inputs? Uh, and I, I told my co-founder that we need to get more women on board. And we faced a minor problem, okay? okay. Um, so we, were, we basically were, believe in remote working. So we have an office in Toronto and in Mumbai and Bangalore. And my co-founder set up a set of interviews uh, for hiring. And we had about 24 applicants, out of mm -hmm. which 11 were, were women. And the interview was scheduled to happen on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. And eight out of those 11 women dropped out at wow. the last moment saying they had a family emergency. Oh. Now, my co-founder came back saying, I want to hire women, but I'm upset. I'm upset because I don't think they're ambitious enough. And we had a little bit of tiff on that, uh, which is understandable. Yeah. But then I had to make him understand that these are women we're hiring back home in India. Yeah. And there are a lot of limitations and challenges that they face. Yeah. And if we as their future employers don't provide them with a conducive environment where they can actually work freely, we're not gonna go we're not gonna move forward. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think the basic principle or uh, that both he and I have agreed on is that we must strive, if not anything else, to at least achieve 30% uh, women in our workforce. And, and how many employees do you have now? Right now we're a team of eight with Amazing. three women on, on board, Fantastic. Yeah, that's including me. Fair, yes, as a co <laughs> Yeah. So that foundational thought was, it was setting an accountability metric right, mm -hmm. off, right off the start. It was uh, a little bit of self-education, I guess, for your co-founder oh, yes. around some of the cultural understandings. Right, because you see, when you're in a startup, you are focused on scaling up. You 100%. don't want to deal with these issues, you know? 100%. But then you have to be a little more cognizant of these yeah. issues. So where can people go to get more cognizant, especially with these very minute things that if you don't live that experience, it's just going to go right over your head? Yeah. Well, uh, you, you need to have these dialogues. You constantly need to have these dialogues on social media, mm -hmm. attend these events, and you need to speak about this at every given opportunity. You just gotta get the intent out there and act on it fast. It's as simple as that. There are no big words out there. There are no big policy making out there. There are no big, there's no big paperwork out there. It's an intention and it's action. Amazing. Thank yeah. you so much for your Thank time you so today. Much. And for anyone else watching this, there's tons of amazing other content we've got here. We've got more fantastic entrepreneurs uh, to do an interviews. And if you're watching a live stream of the summit, there are so many great talks and panels and other content. So stay tuned and thanks for watching. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Stefan.